um, um, in the sense that instead of using the formula and instead of using the table where the restriction is there, we can use our calculator to calculate this by normal distribution item. And for you to use your calculator, your TI-83 or TI-84, to access this item, you need to hit second VAR, V-A-S. And once you hit second VAR, this is what you should have, or this is what you will see that if you scroll down in terms of A and B, you will see that the binomial PDF and binomial CDF. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your objective or this is your obstacle when you're using this item is you have to determine which one am I using. Am I using a binomial PDF or am I using a binomial CDF? So the distinction between the two is the binomial PDF is whenever they ask you to find the exact number. If they ask you to find a number at the exact location, meaning if it's equal to a specific number, then that is your PDF at one point, the PDF for one point. For the CDF is a cumulative item. So if they ask you for the range of item, then we use the binomial CDF. And the challenge for the binomial CDF and the challenge for the PDF too is you have to know what is your X value, what is your end point, okay? So to know or uh, distinguish the, between the two is if you are looking for one particular point, we are using the binomial PDF at one particular point. If we are looking for a group of point, if we look for a cumulative item, then we use the binomial CDF. The other problem come in is your calculator for the binomial CDF, your calculator can only calculate from the smallest number to the given point. So if they ask you for something beyond that, we have to kind of maneuver around to find an answer. And I will mention that in a bit. But let's take a look at this item here. So we know that there are two things that we can use in our calculator. And once we have that, let's take a look at this problem. And, and with this problem, we can use the, the chart because it's in the RAM in terms of 0.20% or 0.2. The chart does give us the 20% or 0.2. But let's see how would we go about to use our calculator. So for instance, this item we have, they tell us that in a recent years, 20% of a gamer heard, have heard of a modern warfare too from this uh, data beat, uh, game beat. Um, and assume that 18 gamers are randomly selected or randomly sampled, find the fallen probability. So as always, whenever you read a problem, this is what you need to ask yourself is what are they giving me and what am I need to find, right? So what is the N? To find the binomial distribution, to find any binomial probability, we have to know what, how many items do we have? How many times do we do something? Or in this case, how many people are we selecting? And the N here is 18. And once we have that, we need to know the P. Reminder, the P is the probability. And now we need to know that in term of this item, we need to know what is our, our X. So if you look at this thing here, well, let's, before we do that, let me, uh, when you look at this thing here, do you agree that this particular problem, this particular problem, this is what you need to ask yourself is, am I using the PDF or am I using the CDF? And because they ask you for the exactly, which is find the probability that exactly four, and that's where my X come from is I need to know that X is equal to four. And because they say exactly four, we know that we need to use the binomial PDF because exactly meaning that it's equal to that given number. And if it's equal to that given number, how do we find that? All we need to do is, again, for you guys, this is how you locate, I did not show you earlier, but this is how you were to locate your 
your binomial PDF or binomial CDF is you hit second, VAR, which is, this is your distribution item, which is all the blue item. In order to type the blue item, you hit the second and whatever item you need. And you have to scroll all the way down to option A. And if you scroll down, slower than I expect it to be. If you scroll down, this is the two options that you have, which is binomial PDF and binomial CDF. And if you see that because my problem, they asked me for the exact number, exact number, that's why I using the, I using the PDF because it's exact number, not the CDF where they have accumulation of point, right? So what is my trial in this case? What is my N? My N is 18. What is my P? My P is 20%, which is 0 0.20. And what is my X value? My X value is four. So as you can see, this is what you need to do in the sense of the trial is your N, the P is is the probability of something happen or the percentage of something happen. And the X is the value that we want to look for. And if you have this, once you have this item, all you need to do is press enter and then press enter again. So the probability that exactly four of them have heard about this game is 0.2153. And for those of you who have the TI-83, if you have the TI-83, this is probably what they ask you. This is what probably what you have in terms of, 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 in term of the, um, sorry about that. Um, if you have a TI-83, probably they don't have that prompt for you. Why is it slower than, I think I try to zoom it in. Um, if you have a TI-83, uh, this is what I, I, I want to show you guys, or in term that if you have a 83, you don't have the binomial uh, like this, you probably have, when you hit in the binomial PDF, is probably blank like this, right? So if you have an 83, you have to manually type in the 18, which is your N item, comma, which is comma is right here, 0 0.20, comma, four, and then close the parentheses, meaning if you have an 83, you have to manually type in your item, not just have the prompt as the 84 item have. So basically you just type in binomial PDF, 18 comma 0.2 comma 4. And once you have that, this will be your answer. And because of our calculator, because of our calculator, we don't need to know the formula because they have a built-in formula for you. And we don't really, you could, if you want to, you could look at the table as we have before and using that table as your, as your item. But now we have a calculator. Our calculator can help us to um, find the answer, right? So once we have this thing here, this is the next question they ask you is find a probability that fewer than three people or three of them heard about the scam. So fewer than, if you remember, fewer than meaning again, um, less than three, right? So we know that two people is less than three, one person is less than three, and zero people, there are a possibility that zero, none of them heard about this scam. So as you can see, because it's fewer than, meaning there are accumulation of point. There is accumulation of point, and because there's accumulation of point, we have to use the binomial CDF. So that is what you need to ask yourself is, do I using the binomial PDF or am I using the binomial CDF? And because there is accumulation of point, because there is more than one exact point, 
we use an cumulative item, which is the CDF. And now the hardest problem, once you determine if it's PDF or CDF, now you have to ask yourself, what is the endpoint? What is the endpoint of my item? So do you include the three? That's what you need to ask yourself is, do you include the three if it's fewer than three? Hopefully you say, no, you cannot include the three because three is not fewer than three. So since we do not include the three, my endpoint is at two. I only need to find the zero person, the one person, and the two people. I do not include the three people because three people do not less than or fewer than three. So that's where your endpoint come in is again my by normal CDF 18 comma point two zero comma two. And if you type that in your calculator, reminder to find that how to find that feature, you have to hit second fall and go down to binormal CDF, which is the option B. And that's the only two that we're using for now, which is binormal PDF and binormal CDF. And once you have this, what is the trial, which is the N? Your total number of items we have is 18. My probability will always be decimal because the probability is decimal. And again, my item, my X value is two. And once you identify this item, you press enter, and then you press enter again. So you have 0.2713. And that is how you find the probability of fewer than. And like I mentioned earlier, your calculator does have its limitation. If you have a new calculator, the, the new advanced one, they, they probably can tell you or you can tell the calculator to calculate the item to the left or the item to the right. But if you have the 83 or 84 uh, plus, um, it's have the limitation. And we have to maneuver around the limitation that the calculator has. So if you look at C, if you look at C, they ask you find the probability that more than three people so one thing I tell my student is you have to ask yourself, are you looking for the probability to the left or are you looking for the proper probability to the right of the endpoint? And if you know, see that if they ask you for fewer, meaning we're looking for the item less than that number, which is the left number. And if the left number life is good because your calculator give you that answer. If they ask you for more than, meaning that's the item to the right of the endpoint, and to the right of the endpoint, your calculator cannot give you the probability to the right because the only thing they can do is they can only calculate to the left. What, what we need to do is if they give us the left item, you need to take one minus whatever the left item is to give you the right item. Okay, so in the center of this thing here, first of all, let me ask you what is the endpoint so that you tell your calculator. Do you agree that more than three, meaning the four people, the five people, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, the 10, all the way up to the 18 people? Meaning, as long as it's more than three, those are the number of people, which is the four people is more than three. So now I tell my calculator, calculate to me, my endpoint is from the zero, the one, the two, and the three. And if I can calculate that, if I can calculate that, which is, again, you type in your PC uh, by normal CDF, 18 comma 0.2 comma three. And once you have that, this is the answer they give you. But remember, this is the item to the left, meaning less than four people. To find the item to the right, the total probability as always is one. We need to take one minus the item to the left. And if I do that, my answer will be, will be 0 0.4990. And again, you probably say, wait a minute, Mr. Shren. Wait a minute, Mr. Shren, how do you know your endpoint? And this is what you need to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Again, 
let's take a look at this thing here. We have 18 people, so forget, forget about this 19 to 30. I just have a number line. This is what you want to ask yourself is, um, this is what you want to ask yourself. So the three questions that they give us, the three questions that they give us is this, right? The first question they ask you for exactly, exactly, uh, exactly four, right? So exactly four is easy. Exactly four, they tell us exactly four, meaning um, you just put in the binomial PDF and then this is what you have, which is the X is four. And the next question they ask you is fewer than three. What does it mean fewer than three? Do you agree that the zero, the one, the two, those are the only thing that is fewer than three, right? Three cannot be fewer than three. And ladies and gentlemen, this is where your calculator or this is what your calculator can do. Well, they can only calculate from the left all the way to that number. So in this case, we tell our calculator, calculate me the zero, the one, and the two. And that's why it's fewer than three. We do not include the three. So my endpoint is at two because I want them to calculate the zero, the one, and the two. I don't want to calculate the three because it's fewer than three. And now you ask, if you look at the last question or if you remember the last question they asked you is more than three. <clears throat> Do you agree that more than three is this number, this number, this number? Any of this number is more than three. The four people, the five people, the six, the seven, this, right? More than three, this is the item that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the probability to the right of three. <clears throat> so if this is more than three, and then remember your calculator, can only calculate from the left-hand side to the given number. So why do I use in three at the end point? Why do I use in three and not four? Because remember four is in this side, right? Because this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more than three. And that's why I tell my calculator, calculator, go ahead and calculate to me, find me the probability of this group right here the zero, the one, the two, and the three. And if you see, and, and I go back to the next, the, that slide, if you remember that probability, the probability, the probability of the zero, the one, the two, and the three is equal to 0.5 something, right? 5019, something like that. So that's what the calculator gives us. But now, because the calculator give me the zero, the one, the two, and the three, but that's not what I wanted. Because the question asked me more than three, meaning the four, the five. So because they give me that, I see that I need to take one because the maximum probability is one. I need to take one minus this item. And if I minus that item, that's why you have to ask yourself, do you looking for the left end point or are you looking for the right endpoint? If you're looking for left endpoint, the answer will be on your, on your calculator. Your calculator give that to you. If you're looking for the right side, then you have to take one minus the answer. And if you take that, if we go back to this page, and that's why I take one minus that number, right? Because as I mentioned, my endpoint is at three, more than three, meaning I'm looking for anything on the right of three. So I'm tell my calculator, calculate up to three. And then I take one minus that to give me my answer as in 0 0.4990. So the challenge for you, the challenge for you is you have to ask yourself two items. Am I using the PDF or the CDF? Once you identify that, are you looking for the item to the left or to the right? And then what is your X value, okay? So let's take a look. Well, first of all, question here, question uh, in terms of how to type in your calculator, how to utilize your calculator, or how did I get the endpoint that I got the end from? 
Um, if it was three or, or if it was three or more, would the endpoint be? Yes. If it's three or more, then you have to stop at two. You will do one less of that. Okay. So which which the next which uh the next problem you will see, and that's where I throw in the next slide. But um, let's take a look at this next slide that I have, right? So if you look at this item here, for this particular problem, we cannot use in our, we cannot use in our table because our table does not give us the point 53, right? Our table only give us uh, the 50 and the 55, right? So if you glance through, if you glance through here, hopefully this is what you extract out is the percentage, which is the probability, and the total people that we in the survey or, or in our problem. The 10 to 25 is just a category is not, uh, you know, sometimes they will throw a lot of number and ask you to identify what number is need. Uh, that you got need, right? So this thing here, the only two number that we need is the 53 and the 20. So look at this problem. We know that the N is equal to 20 and the P is equal to 0.53 because that's the percentage we have, okay? And for A, for A, hopefully you guys say that, oh, this is easy. For A, very similar to the other one in terms that they tell us that we need to find the exact, right? Probability of exact seven player is between this age. And looking at this thing here, because it's exact, we know that the X is equal to seven, and we know that we have to use the binomial PDF. So everybody see that because it's exact number, and sometimes you will see on, on, on your homework, instead of say exact, they will tell you find a probability of seven. Uh, find a probability of seven is the same as exact seven, okay? If they say five P, five P of seven, meaning exact seven. So look at this item here. All we need to do is, if you're using your calculator, all you need to do is type in your binomial, identify the binomial PDF, 20 comma 0.53 comma seven, because of the X is seven, and this is all you have to do is once you type it in, this is what you should have, which this is the easy portion of this example because it's exact, meaning at one location, at one particular point, and that's where you use the, the PDF. Now, here come what we have next is fewer than six player, right? So fewer than six player, like I mentioned, this is what you need to ask yourself, uh, is what is my endpoint, right? So let's take a look at this thing here and, and let me erase all of the, so we know that we have 20 people, right? We have 20, so just disregard this. I, I just give a, a, a number line. So fewer than six. So fewer than six, do you agree that this is what we have? Fewer than, no, not that. Fewer than six is the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five. Six is not fewer than six. So looking at this thing here, do you see that to find a probability of fewer than six, this is what I have, and your calculator does give you this answer. The calculator gives you the left hand side. And what is the endpoint I'm using? I'm not using six because I'm looking for fewer than six. So I have to stop at stop at five. So in the sense, or this is what we have, in the sense that we have, because we're looking for a group of number, because we're looking for a group of number and the group of number they ask us is fewer than six. So as I mentioned without my number line, as I mentioned, I do not go all the way to six. I have to go stop at five because my five is the number that I have to calculate, right? Six is not fewer than six. So in this case, that's why my X value is five. And once I then identify my X value 
I'm using the binomial CDF because it's accumulation of point because it's a zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five, right? The accumulation of point, and that's where I have to use the CDF, which is cumulative. And if I type this thing in, cumulation or cumulative or binomial CDF, this is what I have, which is 0 0.0105, okay? So that is where the challenge that you will see, the challenge you will see, and because it's field in six, that's my answer, right? And if you look at this number C, they ask you find a probability of more than 12. Find a probability of more than 12. And if you go back to this number line, and this is one way that I, I tell my student is, is ask yourself, right? Do you looking for the item on the left or on the right? So do you agree that they ask us for more than 12? More than 12, again, look at this thing here, more than 12, do you agree that this group of number is more than 12? I'm looking for the 13, which is more than 12, the 14, the 15, the 16, the 17, the 18, the 19, up to 20 people, because the total people I have is 20. So more than 12 is this group of number. And hopefully you guys see that we're looking for the item on the right-hand side. And because we're looking for the item on the right-hand side, we have to take one minus whatever the answer is. Because your calculator have it restriction, your calculator or my calculator at least, have the restriction that they can only calculate the item on the left. Maybe you have a, a little bit advanced calculator and you can tell them to calculate the item on the right, but the calculator I have, have the restriction. And the restriction for my calculator is they can only calculate from the left-hand side to the given value. So everybody see that my calculator can only calculate from zero to 12. Why do I stop at 12? Because 12 is less than 13, right? Um, 12 is not more than 12. Right, so I stop at 12, which is my endpoint. So to use in this, to utilize this item here, because it's more than 12, I'm looking for the item on the right. And again, 12 is not more than 12. So therefore my X value, my X value, I will use 12. I will tell my calculator, go ahead and calculate me the binomial CDF. I have 20 people. The probability is 0.53 and up to 12, meaning the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, up to 12. And my calculator will give me this 0 0.8019. But this is not my answer because like I mentioned, my calculator, the, the restriction, my calculator is, is calculate the item on the left. But we know that we are not looking for the item on the left-hand side. We have to look in for the item on the right-hand side and to find the item on the right-hand side, I need to take one minus that. And if I take one minus that, this is what I have, which is 0 0.1980. So in terms of this thing here, in terms of this thing here, this is why or this is where I ask you guys to ask yourself, do you include, well, not include, do you find the item on the left, which is fewer than, less than, uh, no. Or do you find the item on the right, which is more than, greater than, or at least, right? If you find the item on the right, you have to take one minus your answer. If you find the item on the left, your calculator will give you that answer, okay? So first of all, question in terms of why, well, A, I think, is easy, you guys understand. Question on B, why do I use in five? And C, why do I use in 12? Again, fewer than, uh, you know, if you look at the video I have in, in the sense that um, if it's fewer than, we will use one, the, the, the one endpoint less. If it's more than whatever the number is, we will use that endpoint, okay? Because we're looking for the item on the right. Now, here come the tricky part, right? The tricky part is D. They ask you for, would it be unusual for 18 or more? 
So what is the difference between this thing here, 18 or more? Well, 18 or more, do you agree that 18 or more is this item, ladies and gentlemen, 18 or more, meaning I have to include 18, the 19, the 20, right? 18 or more, meaning this is the group of number that is included 18 or more. So that is what you need to ask yourself is, before we can answer the unusual or usual, we have to find the probability because the cutoff of the unusual is, is 0.05, right? Anything less than 0.05 is unusual. So in terms of this thing here, because they say 18 or more, everybody see that this is our group of number, 18, 19, and 20. And if this is the group of number that we're looking for, but your calculator cannot do that calculation for you, right? Your calculator cannot do this calculation for you, the 18, 19, or 20. Your calculator can only calculate the zero up to the 17. That's your calculator. That's what my calculator can do. And all I need to do is if I know this region, do you see that I can subtract, take one minus this region to give me the leftover? Right, so that's why I told you is, is first determine are you looking for the item to the left or the item to the to the right? If you're looking for the item to the left, your answer is in your calculator. If you're looking for the item on the right, you have to take one minus, you have to do one extra step. Once you identify if it's to the left or to the right, now ask yourself what is my end point? If it's on the left, then I take whatever the number I have. Or if it's on the right, it depends, do you include the endpoint or do you exclude the endpoint? And again, why? what does that mean? If you look at that at D, because I include the endpoint, I include the 19, 18, 19, and 20, that's why I tell my calculator to calculate one less, one below the 18. And because it's one below the 18, my X, my end point is at 17. And once I have this thing here, all I need to do is plug into my calculator. And if I plug into my calculator, this is what I have. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the answer. This is the left-hand side. To find the right-hand side, I need to take one minus that. And this is what I have, which is 5.14303 e to the negative four. Reminder, what is e to the negative four? Well, e to the negative four meaning this, ladies and gentlemen, meaning you have to move the decimal place four places to the left, meaning right here is the decimal. We move one, two, three, four. Do not jump the gun and say the probability is 5.7 or 5.14. Remember, your probability will always be decimal. It cannot be the whole number. So the, in reality, this is your probability, 0 0.0005. And this number is clearly smaller than 0 0.05. And since it's smaller than 0 0.05, we say that it's unusual. It will be unusual for you to find 18 or more people uh, between this age playing uh, Fortnite, okay? So first of all, question, question on, on how to utilize your calculator here. Question on how, how I have the answer. Everybody have, uh, everybody know how to type in your calculator. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the, the item is you need to know how to type in your calculator. Question on how to type in your calculator and question on how to determine your endpoint. Hey, uh, wait, uh, why did you use eight, uh, 17 instead of 18 or more? Again, because the 18 or more, we include 18, right? Again, if, if you go at this item here, if you think in the term of the number line, if you think in term of the number line, what does it mean 18 or more? Well, 18 or more meaning this is what I have to do. 
this is what I have to find. I have to find the probability of 18. The reason or the difference, the main difference between this one here and the previous one, the previous one say more than 17 or, or more than 16 or, or whatever the, the question was, right? The difference between the two question and, and I purposely put it in here is this thing here, they say more than 12. More than 12, we do not include the 12, right? Because 12 is not more than 12. Down here is 18 or more. 18 or more meaning 18 can be in it because basically it tell you is, is greater than or equal to 18. Meaning we can include the 18. That's the difference between these two. For C, we cannot include the 12. But for D, we can include the 18. It's say 18 or bigger. And if it's 18 or bigger, then this is what I have is 18, 19, 20. And if this is the item we're looking for, I cannot tell my calculator calculate up to 18 because 18 is not in the left hand side. Is that making sense? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so that's why my calculator, my calculator can only calculate up to this number. That, well, now my. Um, give me one second. My, my, my calculator can only calculate up to this number and that is where I want it to calculate is up to the, the 17, not the 18. Because if I calculate up to the 18, uh, I, I intersect with the region I'm looking for. The region I'm looking for is the orange region and I tell them calculate up to this thing here, meaning I, I, I overlap something. So you don't want to overlap your item. And that's why the, the important item is you ask yourself, what is, your, what is the group of data you want to calculate? And whatever that group of calculate you want to calculate, um, your calculator can only calculate to the left. So if, if they ask you this group, then you just type it in, that's your answer. You, you end up at, at 17, right? But in our problem, because they asked us to calculate this group of number, so we have to take one minus it, okay? So that's the difference in terms of, in term of the, the, in term of, um, in terms of the, uh, the difference between C versus D. C, because it's more than 12, so we don't include that. Um, and let's, let's see, I, I think I give you, uh, I think I, I give you this thing here, the, the flow chart in terms of, of um, when you attack this problem, when you attack this problem, every time you read the problem, this is the three thing that you need to find the binomial, binomial uh, PDF or CDF is you need the N, you need the P and you need the X. And once you have those, this is what you need to ask yourself is, when are you using the binomial PDF versus when are you using the binomial CDF? The binomial PDF is when they ask you for the exact point at one location equals something. And the binomial PDF is when they ask you for accumulation of item. And then again, if it's fewer than or less than, or if it's, um, if it's greater than or more than, which is again, fewer than or less than, your answer is from the calculator. If it's more than or at least or above, and you have to take one minus the answer from your, from your calculator. So those are the flow chart that you want to ask yourself or you want to, to look for is which one am I using? Uh, and I think the other one that I give you is how do you determine the endpoint, right? If you have the item, how do you determine the endpoint? How do you determine the X value? So if it's exactly then the X value is whatever the number they give you, that's your X value. Now, the other two is, and again, if it's exactly, that's your PDF. And the CDF, there are a few. There are three of them. If it's fewer than or less than, then the X value is one number less than whatever they asked you. Oh, I'm sorry. Whatever the number they give you, that's your uh, one number less. That's all right. So if it's fewer than five, we will use four. 
If it's fewer than six, we will use five. If it's fewer than 19, we will use 18. So your X value is one value less than whatever the number they give you. If it's more than or equal to, or at least, you haven't seen the word at least, but if it they at least meaning is that number or more, more than or equal to, we have to use one value less, okay? Which is number D or problem D that we have, which is more than 18 or more than, right? So we have to use one value less, which is 17. If it's more than, just strictly more than, then your endpoint will be that given value. So if you remember, we say, what is the probability of more than 12? My endpoint is 12, okay? So basically this is the flow chart for how to determine your X value or how do you determine the endpoint? So again, um, you will have this as your disposal. So um, you, know, you can see how to determine those items. And, and that's where more than 12, that's why we use the X as 12. 18 or more than, then again, we use one less, which is 17. So those are the idea of the endpoint, your X value. Um, question, how to determine those items uh, here? Now, if you don't have question, let's take a look at the last item we have in chapter 5.2 is if they give you the binomial distribution, if they give you the binomial distribution, uh, how can you find the mean? How can you find the variance? And how can you find the standard deviation? So one thing about this item here is, is easier than is look. Why? Because to find a mean, just like before, right? Just like uh, I mentioned earlier, when you see all this problem, what do, what do you need? Well, you need an N, you need a P, and you need an X. So now to find a mean, to find a mean, all you need to do is take the N times the P. So the mean is basically whatever the number is, how many ever number of trial you have or how many number of people you have, you take the N times the P, that will be your mean. And your variance will be, you take the N times the P times the one minus P. And if you, you know, in other book, they say the, the N times the P times the Q, which is the Q is the, the, the leftover, which is the one minus P. So this author, he using one minus P, which is the N times the P times the one minus P will be your variance. And what, how do we find the standard deviation? Well, the square root of your variance will be your standard deviation, which is the square root of your variance will be the square root of the N times the P times the one minus P. And those are the three items that they will ask you to do. So, and all you need to do is plug it in uh, your formula. And, and the formula is given to you uh, in, in terms of uh, on Connect Math, right? So looking at this thing here, let's say if they give you this item, they don't ask you to find the probability. They just say, according to businessofapp.com, 70% uh, of the Fortnite player have made an in-game purchase. A sample of 25 Fortnite player are chosen, find a mean, find a variance, and find a standard deviation. So we know, looking at this item here, what are the two numbers we need? Well, we need an N. How many player did we select? Well, we have 25. We need a P, which is what is the probability that, that one of them, or what is the probability of they buy something in, in the game, right? In-game purchase. So the P, which is 0 0.70. So to find a mean, hopefully you guys say, well, find a mean is easy, which is the N times the P. So all you need to do is take the 25 times the 0 0.70, which is in average. If I have 25 of them in average, how many of them spend money in the game? So on average, 17.5. Meaning again, 17 people or 18 people on average will spend, based on this information, 17.5 of them will spend some money in this game, okay? And look at this item here. What is the variance? Well, the variance, all we need to do is take the N times the P times the one minus P. 
So my M is 25, my P is 0.70, and the one minus P, which is 0.3, right? One minus the 0.70, which is 0.3. So I take the 25 times the 0.7 times the 0.3, and my variance will be 5.25. And if I find a variance, I can take a square root of 5.25, to give me the standard deviation, or if you plug into your formula, you take the square root of the n times the p times the one minus p. So the square root of 25 times the 0.7 times the 0.3, which the square root of 525, and that will give you 2.2913. So this is what we have, or, or this is, how you find the mean, how you find the variance, and how you find the standard deviation. Question in terms of how to input this in your calculator to find this answer, ladies and gentlemen. And a question on how to derive or how to utilize your calculator to find this item. All right, so let's put everything together, right? Let's put everything together, and, and this is probably your typical your typical question on your homework, your typical question on your quizzes or your, or your test or your final exam, right? They put all of them together and ask you multiple part. So they say that uh, the central for the, the, the uh, disease control and prevention uh, report that 25% of a baby boy between six to eight months in the United States weight more than 20 pounds a sample of 16 baby is in this study. So one thing, if you look at this problem, they throw a bunch of number at you and your, your job, right? Your objective or your um, you know, challenge is what number are useful and which number is category that we, are, we don't need to use, right? So hopefully you identify that the two number that we are needed is the percentage, which is the P, and the total babies or the total number of people in this studies, right? So that's your M. The six to eight month and the 20 power is just some category, some item, right? We don't, we don't need those numbers. So we need the two items, which is the N and the P. So the N is 16 and the P is 0.25. And once you look at this thing here, or if you glance through this thing here, you can see that it's very identical. Find a probability that exactly phi, which is hopefully you guys say, oh, Mr. N, exactly phi is the PDF, the binomial PDF, more than six, which is the binomial CDF, fewer than three, which is the binomial CDF, more than eight, which is binomial CDF, and again, uh, the mean, which is the n times the p, and the standard deviation, which is a square root of the n times the p times the one minus p. So if you can do this thing here, we, we have it all, right? So now the next challenge is, what is my x for a? For a, what is my x? Do you agree that for a exactly, meaning that is your x, whatever the number they give you, that is your x. There's no other question about this. And we know that we're using the binomial PDF, 16 comma 0.25 comma five. And if you do that, the probability of you select an exactly five of them weight more than 20 pounds will be 0.1802, roughly 18%, right? So looking at this thing here, question or uh, uh, um, any question on how I, I have this answer 0.1802. Again, you just do the second VARS, second VAR, and then go down to the binomial PDF. Now, the challenge like before, what is the end point here? If you remember, hopefully, you know, if not, you can look at the flow chart again. If you remember more than six, more than six, meaning whatever the number they give you, that will be your X. More than six, meaning the seven, the eight, the nine, the 10, all the way to the 16. And more than six reminder to find the answer, you have to take one 
minus the answer in your calculator. And how do I find the calculator? I need to use the binomial CDF, 16 comma 0.25 comma six. And if I do that, if I plug it in, this will be what the calculator give me, but that is not the answer I'm looking for. I need to take one minus that and one minus that to give me 0 0.0796. Reminder, again, those flow chart, um, I type it up for you guys to see how to determine your endpoint and how to find your answer. The answer more than, you have to take one minus the result. And if it's fewer than, we just, whatever the answer in your calculator, that will be your answer. But what is the X value for fewer than three? Fewer than three reminder, we have to use one number less than what they give us. In this case, X is equal to two. And we're using the binomial CDF like before. And this will be my answer because that is what the answer on the left-hand side, okay? So, so first of all, question with, uh, question with A, B, or C here. And if you don't have question with A, B, or C, let's take a look at D. Would it be unusual if more than eight of them weight more than 20 pounds? So is it unusual? Reminder, the unusual, the cutoff for unusual is 0.05. And more than eight pounds, or more than eight of them, more than eight of the, the babies, then um, our X value will be eight. And then we have to use the binomial CDF to give me this number, but reminder, this is not the answer for more than. To find a more than, we have to take one minus the result from the calculator to give me this item, which is 0 0.0075. And hopefully you guys say that 0 0.0075 is less than the cutoff of 0 0.05. And because it's less than, we say yes is unusual. Yes is unusual for this to happen because the cutoff is 0 0.05 and this number is less than 0 0.05, okay? And lastly, to find the mean, all we need to do is take the n times the p and the n times the p to give me 16 times 0.25 to give me four, right? So in average, that's what they, you know, this is what they mean is on average, four baby will be weight more than 20 pounds. Four baby in the age group, four boy in the age group of six to eight months will weight more than, more than 20 pounds. And how do we find the standard deviation? Hopefully you guys see that the standard deviation is a square root of n times p times one minus p. All we need to do is fill in the number. My n is 16, my p is 0.25, my one minus p, which is one minus 0.25, to give me square root of 16 times 0.25 times 0.75. And if I type that out, I have 1.7321. And that is my standard deviation. And hopefully the standard deviation and the variance and the and the mean is very doable in that sense. So first of all, question with this. Any question with this particular item uh, that went over or any item on the screen here, ladies and gentlemen? Any question? All right, if you don't have question, this is the end. This is the end of chapter five um, in the sense that they ask you to find the binomial distribution or find the probability using the binomial distribution and then from that data find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. So if you don't have question, let's take a look at, let's take a look at chapter six. So let's see. Um, so let's take a look at chapter six and the different, 
Um, the problem in chapter six is this, ladies and gentlemen, we now will deal with a normal distribution. And from here on out, we will deal with a normal distribution a lot. So what is a normal distribution? Well, before we talk about a normal distribution, we want to talk about a probability density curve. So whatever curve they give you will be a probability density curve is basically show you or basically tell you that the proportion of the data is between whatever value have a, an item or the percentage, okay? So one main thing between chapter five versus chapter six is this, ladies and gentlemen, chapter five, we are dealing with a discrete data and chapter six, we are dealing with a continuous data. Reminder, the discrete data is basically the one person, the two people, the three, the four, the five, or the item, right? The continuous is now we have some interval. We have some interval of, 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 of the data. Uh, and so in short, this is what we have is no matter what curve they give you, we call this a probability density curve. Meaning in short, underneath this curve, the area underneath this curve will be one. Meaning the total probability, the total percentage is 100% which uh, correlate to be one, right? And whatever the curve, however they ask you is, <clears throat> they will ask you this three item and this three item will be interchangeable. Meaning they will ask you find the area underneath the curve or find the proportion of the data underneath the curve or find the probability of the data. So all three of them, meaning the same item, meaning your goal is we want to find the percentage of the data that in a given value, okay? So they will give you the value, for instance, look at this thing here, they will ask you what is the percentage of the data between two to four? And you know, for this one here, we don't know. They don't give us that, but that's our goal. That's our objective. But before we do further, I want to point this thing out. In order for you to find the area underneath the curve, or in order for you to find an area of something, we need two items. Reminder, the area is the length times the width. In order for you to find the area, we need to have the length times the width. And if we have just a single line, just a single point, we cannot find an area at a single point. Because if I give you A and I ask you, what's the area at A? Well, we don't know because we know the length, but we don't know the width of this thing here. So at a single point, we don't have an area. So at a given point, we don't have an area. Okay, that's very important because we get, we find the area close to that point, but not exactly at that point, okay? So, so you will see uh, in the sense that they will never ask you to find the area at that given point. They will ask you to find the area that between some value. So let's take a look at this probability density curve and how would we, uh, how would your problem or how would you interpret this item? So they give you this probability density curve, meaning again, we have some curve. Uh, this thing here, a little bit um, skewed to the right, right? Many data is on the right and is further left, uh, is start to decline. So they give you this item, they tell you that the area between four and six, my A value and my B value, the length times the width, the area here is 0.16. And like I mentioned earlier, the area, the proportion and the probability is all meaning the same thing. They just change in the word, but you looking for or you find whatever the answer you're looking for is the same item. So what is the proportion of the population between four and six? Well, 
in the same item, what is the area between four and six? As you can see, the graph gives us the area is 0.16, and that is the proportion of the probability between four and six. Similarly, what is the probability that that the that would be between four and six. And again, the probability is the same as the area, is the same as the proportion, is the same answer, 0.16. And now they change it up and they say, well, what is a proportion of a population that is not between four and six? Well, we know the total proportion or the total area underneath this curve is equal to, hopefully you say one, because that's what they, they have, right? The criteria that we have is whatever curve, whatever curve we have, the total area underneath the curve is equal to one. And if I know between four and six is 0.16, everybody I see that I can just deduct that out. If I subtract, I take one, which is the maximum, the total area minus what I have, then that's the leftover, which is the leftover is 0.84. Meaning the 0.84 is somewhere, whatever the white item that is not shaded, right? This item and this item together is equal to 0.84. And you can see the higher peak is here. So the higher, the more area is covered, meaning that's why they have more area in terms of 0.84, okay? So the criteria that you need to remember is the area underneath the curve is equal to one. So if they give us this portion and they ask us to find the leftover, well, we just need to take one minus what they give us to give us the leftover, okay? So the idea is that, ladies and gentlemen, the idea is doesn't matter what curve they give you. So similarly, let's say that they give you this curve, this probability density curve. And this probability density curve, as you will see, that is a reverse bell-shaped curve skewed to the right, right? The more data is on the right and it starts to decline that we have. So they give us whatever this data is between zero and one, the area, because it's the highest peak, they have more area, 0 0.63. Between one and two, the area is 0 0.23. And we don't know the rest. They don't give us, right? But we can find out. We can, we can do it. Right, so what they ask us for A, what is the probability of a random selected item is between zero and one? So you will see me do this a lot later is, you want to sketch what area we're looking for, right? Remember probability proportion is the same as the area. Do you agree that this is what they asked me is find the probability between zero and one? And the probability between zero and one is basically the area between zero and one and the area between zero and one is 0.63. And that's my answer, okay? So that's all we need to do is find the area underneath the curve. And similarly, find the proportion between one and two. Well, proportion is the same as the area, like I mentioned, which is the proportion between one and two is this item here. Between one and two will be point two, three, that is my area, and that is the proportion, it's the same answer, it's just different wording. And lastly, not lastly, but C, they ask you find the proportion, or if they say find the probability between zero and two, do you agree that zero and two is this area, which is those are the shaded area? All I need to do is take the point 63 plus the point two, three, and that will be the area between zero and two, right? Zero and two, those are the shaded item, and the shaded item, the area underneath the curve is those two regions is I add them together to give me 0 0.68, um, 0.86. Question with A, B, or C. And lastly, what about what is the probability that the random select is greater than two? Well, greater than two, do you agree that the green shaded item is greater than two? Anything more than two is greater than two, which is anything on the right of two is more than two or greater than two. And if you, you know, correlate this to chapter five, well, how do I find the thing on the 
right and two. Well, if I know the item on the left, all I need to do is take one minus that. So in this case, the item on the left is 0.86. And to find the item on the right, I just need to take one minus 0.86 to give me 0.14. Remember, the total probability is one, right? The maximum probability that you have is one. So that's why you have to take one minus what is given. In this case, the given part is 0.86. One minus 0.86 to give you 0.14. So question here in terms of how to utilize your probability density curve to answer your problem. And again, probability density curve is basically tell you that we have some probability and we divide it uh, in, in terms of the area underneath that curve. And let's take a look at uh, the last item I want to cover is many, many of you probably saw this or knowing this already. Uh, we have a normal distribution and a normal curve. So what is the difference between a normal distribution curve versus the probability distribution curve? The probability distribution curve, meaning we have some, some curve is not symmetric. Okay, the main difference is for a normal distribution curve is you, you have a symmetric bell-shaped curve. And if you have a symmetric bell-shaped curve, and this is the unique thing about this bell-shaped curve is the mean, the median, and the mole is at one location, which is at the center. And they are symmetric in terms that there are 50% of the data below the mean, and there will be 50% of the data above the mean all the time. And this will always be your normal distribution curve and is a symmetric bell shaped curve, okay? The probability distribution, it doesn't matter. If you look at, if, if you look at the previous two curve, it's not symmetric. They have weird distribution. They have something in, in terms of 63, you know, 15 or something like that. This thing here, they will always be symmetric. And when they are symmetric, this brings us back to our empirical rule. And reminder, what is the empirical rule? Empirical rule is basically tell you that in chapter three, within one standard deviation, they will include 68% of your data. In within two standard deviation will be 95% of the data and within three standard deviation will be include 99.7% of your data. Uh, earlier in chapter three, we say almost all, but now we give you the exact number, well, not quite exact, but the percentage, which is 99.7%, okay? So in the sense that this will always be your normal distribution curve, which is symmetric. And we mentioned more um, property, property of this bell shape curve on Tuesday. Uh, let me stop here for today. Uh, any question in terms of the material that we cover here, ladies and gentlemen?